Hey, what's up team? It's Joe Mill here with Killer Miller Q. We back at it again. And today we're gonna pull out the old pellet grill and we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We got beef jerky coming your way. I know you're gonna like this. Hold tight. Okay, so now we in here, we about to get started on making this beef jerky, but first things first, I need to show you what I did the night before to get you to this part. Hold tight. Okay, as you can see, we are looking over our ingredients and what's going to be going into this uh, mixture that we're going to be letting this uh, meat marinate in as we get together this jerky. I'm going to go through everything with you and I'll make sure I leave the uh, exact amounts of everything that I'm using there in the comments. But uh, nothing too, too crazy. You probably already got all this stuff laying around in the house. We got, and then basically I'm just using a Ziploc here that I got, you know, with a bowl kind of lining it to make sure it doesn't fall uh, out or nothing like that. And uh, I'll be able to kind of sit that in the refrigerator the exact same way. So we're going to be adding in some soy sauce. Nothing too crazy. We're just throwing all of this right into the Ziploc. I got some Worcestershire. I done heard that pronounced about 30 different ways. We got some garlic salt. And in there. We got some of this onion powder. Good amount of brown sugar. Some red pepper flakes. You got the IPA of your choice, or whatever kind of beer you might want to use, or you can skip that step. I went with uh, something that's local out here. Not too, too dark or like a normal IPA, just a little bit lighter. A uh, little bit lighter on flavor. I think it'll go well. Got a healthy amount of that going in. Uh, so that'll help. Oh yeah, got us some sizzle now. That'll help really break down those fibers and everything. And we got some honey. Now I didn't have any on deck, but this is somewhere where I would have liked to use some of that hot honey in here. I'm going to use my little handy dandy spatula, get the rest of that out, and then we'll bring out the star to show the meat. Alright, so there's the star to show the old meat. So basically with this meat, you want to keep in mind, get these flies up out of here, make sure they don't get on mine. Um, you want to go with something that's super lean. You want to make sure that there's not a whole lot of fat in there in that meat. So normally what you're going to see with jerky is uh, I went with flank steak or you might see some people go with eye of brown. Something that's super lean where you don't have a whole lot of fat that you got to worry about cleaning off. And uh, the idea of this when we actually get it all said and done is we're going to be drying this meat out to make jerky, right? So there's a little bit of uh, fat that I'm going to get off. Maybe I try to work and get some of that off right there. And then there's uh, two ways you can go. And you can really see it here on this back side, so I'll leave it here for a second. You can cut your meat with the grain. With the grain, we'll say it's going, grain's going this way. And I would cut the long strips the same way. That would make it potentially more chewy. Or you can also go and cut it against the grain, which is what I'm going to be doing today. Which will make it a little bit more tender. Right, and that's normally how we're usually going to be cutting your steaks and everything else, our briskets and stuff like that. So as you can see, all of these lines going straight across, if I'm going against the grain, I'll be making my slices that way. Right, and I'm just going to basically end up uh, cleaning off a little bit of this silver skin or any of this little fat that I can get without gouging into it too, too much. And then I'm going to cut some nice long strips. I'll bring you back and let you see that. Just like that. Okay, so you got the smaller ones. Get me some little chunks out of those. That's the beautiful thing about it. I mean, make it however you want. I mean, at the end of the day, any size works. So I have me some smaller little chunks and then these will dry out at some longer pieces. And the only thing left to do is we're gonna slide those directly over and put them in that mix we just made, right? Make sure they're uh, completely apart from each other. And then I'm gonna let them basically go for 24 hours. You can do anywhere from, I'd say 12 to 24, but like anything, you want that flavor to be in there. So I say at least go 24, go overnight, and uh, you should be good from there. So we're just gonna start tossing these right on over into the pile. He who remains is right there. All right, that's the little bit that I was able to take off of there. And this is so lean and it was so thin, I didn't want to go too hard in there trying to get it all mixed in and or uh, cut off and mess around and just cut up a lot of my meat. 
Mix that up a little bit. This smells great. That beer in there, those red pepper flakes and all of that good soy sauce and Worcestershire and everything, garlic, onion, that stuff will get to working. Starting to break down those muscle fibers and uh, really get marinated in there. We'll get this bag nice and flat, get all the air squished out of it, and it'll be ready to go ahead and slide in the fridge. There it is. So basically, take a second, make sure you get all of that air out of that bag, right? Seal it up nice and tight. Take a second to move it around in there. Get everybody... Uh, marinate it with that and make sure that you put like a plate or like i said you can slide it in there right up under this bowl or something like that something to protect so that way if you do get any leaks you don't got no problems uh makes it easier to kind of handle and stuff in the fridge but along the way and along the day i'll come in there and do exactly what i'm doing now it's just kind of moving it around make sure every one of those pieces is getting some of that love flip it upside down and let it go we'll come back in 24 and we'll get started with the cook Hey team, I just want to jump in here real quick to let you know if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that bottom right corner, like and subscribe, check out some of the other cooks that's here on the channel, and for everybody else that's been here to help me get to this over 500 mark for subscribers, I appreciate y'all, got nothing but love for you, and you know we're going to keep it coming. Other than that, let's get back to the work. All right, 24 hours later, and this bag is a little sticky, so that's why, like I said, you always kind of get you a little something for it to sit off in. You can see what it looks like, smells great. And this baby has been marinating well as I've been massaging the bag and kind of moving it around. So now we're getting everything set and pretty easy. This is all we're going to do. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is dry these pieces of meat out. So I got a couple of paper towels and all I want to do is take each individual piece out and we're just going to lay it here and then we're going to pat it dry. At this point, all this flavor that we need is in between and inside these muscle fibers. That beer has probably worked to already start loosening this baby up. And we should be good. Love those red pepper flakes on there. You can smell this stuff. I'm gonna get the rest of these out. Now that you see, once we get everything out, we'll start to pat. And I got my smoker coming up to temp. My old Green Mountain. Today we're going to keep it low and easy. I'm going for 180 degrees. Alright, and all we got to do now is we got another couple of napkins and we're just going to pat it. Remember you want to make sure you don't skip this step because this is actually going to help you with decreasing how long you got to cook. At 180 degrees, I'm thinking this is going to take me roughly two to three hours and I should be able to get it to the point where we're getting those white muscle fibers and it's getting a little stiff and it'll be ready to go. I'm going to finish drying these up. Make sure this pit's up to 180. And we're going to throw these babies on the rack. I just want to bring you in here so you can see what it looks like. We got it on the rack. This baby is smoking. We at 180. I'll bring you back in a couple hours and we'll check it out then. All right, team. We smoking right along at 180. I got a mix of uh, cherry. There we go. Nice mix of uh, cherry and hickory pellets. A little maple in there. All I'm going to do is spin this rack around so I can make sure it stays even on the cooking. Pardon my reach. And then we're going to let these go. And we'll check them out at about two hours. Look at that color. Baby's looking good. All right, team. It has been two hours and seven minutes. We should be getting close. Oh, look at all that good smoke coming out of there. So what I'm looking for, you should lightly bend. And I should start to see some of that whiteness in there. They're getting close. I'm going to give it just a little bit longer. Like that one, that actually seems kind of right. I'm going to let it get maybe. I'm going to finish out that two and a half hours. And then we'll pull it. We didn't have to do any turning or nothing like that. All I did at the hour mark, like you saw, was flip that rack around. Smoking right along. Two hours, 30 minutes. I knew these are right about, about ready for me. They was looking decent on the last time. But you can see in here, they look pretty dried out. They got a little bit of bend feel like they're gonna be nice and chewy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these in and then um, I'll let them calm down and I'm gonna throw these in a ziplock bag I like to let them chill out for a little bit and then uh, toss it in the refrigerator that way they keep and then we're gonna taste test these babies tomorrow all right all right all right we all set these babies been hanging out in the fridge they didn't got a chance to kind of chill on out and marry and um, they came out great at the end of the day, I think these are going to be perfect. I have already tasted it, and I like it. And um, like I said, I like once it kind of sits and really gets to kind of settle in, uh, flavor's good. But you know, we got to get a good taste test that you can see. 
All right, so we about to finish this thing out. I'm gonna give me another taste test because I already know what they tasting like, but if I don't do one on cam, it just don't feel right. So I gotta share with you. I'm going for this piece sitting right up front. And I tell you what, you can literally tear it apart. Last time I made jerky, I used bourbon. I feel like I had a lot more bite. Going with that beer, this one actually kind of got that sweeter taste, like a sriracha or a teriyaki. Really good. The pepper flakes bring out a nice little kick at the end. And I tell you what, you can smell and or taste all of that smoke in there too. These came out great, super easy. You can make your own jerky. The only thing that I didn't do that you could have did is you can also add in curing salt. And I believe that'll actually help your meat hold a little bit longer. But as long as you keep it in a Ziploc and keep it in the fridge, you'll be fine. With that said, it's your boy, Joe Mill here at Killer Miller Q and Black Smoke Barbecue. We got a lot of good things coming up soon. Hold tight and stay with me. Peace.